Is there a too high and a too low to put the panel? Well, all right guys, welcome back to my channel. Before we do anything else, let's give me a thumbs up. Now, so what we're gonna do today is we're going to do a series on mounting, getting ready to mount, talking about, yes, this is gonna be a talking video. It's also gonna be a demonstration video, so you don't have to, you know, whatever. There'll be timestamps down below. But I just did a service change and I bought, or, and I have a sub panel that we're going to mess with. Now, let me tell you rule of thumb, because I don't know where it is in the code book. And if somebody does, they can drop down in the comments and definitely leave me the information. So rule of thumb is if you have a 200 amp service, 200 amp panel, and you want to rub, <laughs> rub, and you want to run a sub panel, it's always a rule of thumb that I've always been taught through any any electrician I've ever went with, any company I've ever went with. Now, like I said, I don't know where it is in the code book. It may be there, it may not be. But you always go half of what your panel is. So if you have a 200 amp panel, you can go 100. We're gonna mount a 100 amp panel right here on this fake wall, and we're gonna talk about it. Now, what we need to talk about first is a lot of Armchair electricians talk about, don't use drywall screws, don't use drywall screws, blah, blah, blah. Well, for this, definitely for this, I would definitely not use drywall screws. Now, in a wall of this caliber, you know, where there's basically nothing on the backside, you're going to have to mount it in the studs, all right? And I don't know what these screws are called. I always call them timber truss screws. I will show you here in a second. Uh, they are perfect Wafer head screws, I think is what they're called, maybe. Uh, but we always call them temperature screws. I don't know why. I don't know why, but we do. And uh, pretty sure they're wafer head screws, though. And I would mount them in here in this spot. All right, so for this, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys exactly. Now, this panel has been used, so don't be like, oh, it's, you know, blah, blah, blah. But it has been used. So it's got a bunch of Romex connectors in it. I'm not going to take them out right now. We'll take them out as episodes. Keep on airing. When I get to that point, they all come out, and I'll, we'll go from there. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you guys this panel. We're going to talk about uh, how to knock out the holes so you can get the screws into your uh, wall and go from there. Now, what we do need to talk about before we mount this is, is there a too high and a too low to put the panel? Well, yes, there is. What is the code on um, putting a panel in anywhere? Do you know? Well, while I get my stuff together, I'm gonna let the video go on and let you guys think about it. Don't worry, I won't forget this one. Usually sometimes I say, do you know something? And I forget to tell you, but I ain't gonna forget this time. So let me get my stuff together, my screws, my drill, yada, yada, yada. We'll come back and we'll mount the sucker. If you're thinking about what I asked, just so we're aware that there are, you know, different kinds of screws. Obviously you wanna use a wood screw, not a drywall screw. This is the screw I'm talking about right here. Now this is the ones that I prefer. Even though they have a wafer head per se on them, I still like to use a washer just to make sure that I have a good purchase on my screw. Now, I asked you a question probably like 40 seconds ago, but is there too high or too low of a breaker height? Now, what is the code on that? So your maximum height of your breaker cannot be more than six foot six, plain and simple. Uh, I have seen many times where the panel is higher than that and things happen like maybe something happened in the crawl space and or basement i mean and they had to dig it out so it drops the floor a little bit for whatever reason i've seen it before uh i've seen them pretty low like right at thigh height too and same reason they backfill after the fact so you know you gotta it's good to know if you're gonna have that issue which you know sometimes you just don't know but anyway six foot six to the tallest one of your breaker. Now in this panel right here, this is a 100 amp panel. Can't put it no more than six foot six. So I'm six foot and I like to put it, when I look at the panel, I like to be able to look straight into the breaker, the tallest breaker. It doesn't matter how high the rest of the panel is. That's what I like to do it. Now, 
I'm gonna show you guys right here. If you can see. So I'm gonna show you guys right here. See these old knockouts right here? I know there's a lot of knockouts, but that is what you would knock out with a screwdriver. I'm gonna show you how to do that here in a second. And that's where you would mount it. That's where I would mount it. And that's what we are gonna mount it now. I am gonna put four screws in it because this is a, it's gonna be a, a few episodes on this panel in particular right here. You know, there's other panels, but this is the panel that we're gonna use because obviously this is bequeathed to me, so I'm gonna use it. So we're gonna knock these out. I'm gonna show you how I would knock them out. Now, because we're recording this, and I'm a single person. I'm gonna do this on top of a ladder, which I'll, I know you can't see, but basically what I would do, it doesn't really matter what kind of screwdriver you use. I like just a Phillips screwdriver because quite frankly, that's what I have in my hand. So I would just take it and I'd put it right in that little hole right there and I would hold the panel and boom, smack the hole out. Now, as you can see, maybe not, but we're gonna flip it around and see. You see the hole now, right? And. This is what it looks like on the other side. You have a little tit, as you can see. And you can either take your finger and knock it off. Uh, that's what I was going to do, but apparently I can't because it's still pretty tight in there. You just take your clines and just twist it and boom, it comes out. You'll do that for the other ones. As you can see right here, there's another one right here. And same on the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. No reason to you to watch me do all of them and we'll get right back to you. So since we're a single person here, let's say that you're not very coordinated. So what we're gonna do is we're going to have like a little helper kind of putting this panel in here because we wanna make sure that it is in there and it, well, it stays in there. So we're going to kind of help ourselves out by using a piece of wood. So we're gonna put it like here and we're gonna layer a panel in there and then we're gonna screw it to it. Now I'm gonna walk you through all this as I'm doing it so you guys can see and understand what I'm saying. You don't have to do it like that. A lot of times, you know, when you're changing the panel out, you always have a second person, whether it be your wife, your buddy. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to put this in here. Guys, check this drill out here. This thing is pretty phenomenal. I'm gonna leave a link down below. Comes with four different attachments so you guys can uh, change the heads around. It's pretty, pretty actually neat. But handy, obviously. Oh my gosh, this is handy. And I'll drive a three inch screw right now. Now, let me tell you something about the studs. Most carpenters usually put the studs at the right uh, distance apart. Obviously this is because I'm not a carpenter, but I did it right. So this is gonna fit very snugly into here. And yeah. So with the board in place, what we're gonna do is we're going to pretty snug going to, we're going to tap this in with a hammer. Or beat the hell out of it to get in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our screw and we are going to screw it. Now, this is the perfect opportunity for me to switch the heads around because I can't get that drill in there. So watch this. So this is my case and all these heads are in here. Obviously, it's fairly new, and I've used it for a little while, and I, so far, I love it. comes with, you know, variable chuck. Comes with a, another little chuck, and then the one I'm gonna be using, the right angle. So, without further ado, let's put it on. All right, so to change this chuck out, all you do, or the head or whatever you call it, is you pull this little, like, sleeve, Boom. Do you hear that? And then you put the right angle on. You can put it that way or you can spin it around. I mean, however you want to do it. So for this one, we're going to, we want to put it in like so, 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 so. All right, like this. Yep, that should be good right there, the right angle. You guys want to see what I'm doing? I figured you did. So let's put this one in.
All right, so with panel mounted, let's make sure that the breaker is not too high because it kind of looks high, doesn't it? Right, here we go. We're at 67 inches, which or 68, I guess, 67 and a half to center. We're plenty within range. All right, so there's your panel mounted. Everything is good and flush. So all we gotta do now is to talk about the guts. <laughs> 